observing Kent Herbeck in the second off Scott Kamalecki. He's at home. He's usually tough here, but not on this pitch. Solo homer for Herbeck, his 22nd of the year. Twins lead one to nothing. Three batters later with two men on, Pedro Munoz goes the other way. Third homer in the last two nights against the Yanks. It's 4-0. And Kevin Tappany against Williams and then Tartable. And even some defense from Scott Stahoviak at third. And there go the Yankees. Just like that, a 5-2 Minnesota final. As Munoz, we said, three homers in the last two games. Gallego homered for the Yankees, his 10th of the season. One all, two out. Mark Lewis, the grounder to Cal Ripken. Scoops it, throws, and over at the other end, Paul Carey doesn't hang on. Next batter, Sandy Alomar, toward the right corner. It's fair, and it rolls for a double. Lewis scores, Cleveland leading 2-1. to one. In the sixth, the runner at first, Mike Pagliarulo, who's come up with some big hits for the Orioles since they acquired him in midseason. Cal Ripken coming from first and headed home. Looks like a nifty slide, but he is called out. And the mild-mannered Ripken doesn't agree. Then tied at two on the seventh, Candy Maldonado comes through with a base hit scoring Mark Lewis and Sandy Alomar. And the Orioles, tough time. Big Ben losing at Cleveland, four to two. Seven hits in the game for the Indians. McDonald, six and a third, five hits, four runs, three were earned in the AL Eastern race. First inning, Scott Fletcher off Henkin, driving his first pitch toward the gap in right center. It's a leadoff triple. For the Red Sox hustling infielder. Two batters later, Mo Vaughn past Alomar. Fletcher in on the Red Sox have a one to nothing lead. Top of the third tied at one, it's Fletcher again. The solo homer to left, fifth of the year, and the Red Sox with a two to one advantage. Then Toronto ties it in the fifth. Fletcher continues to beat up Penkin. A little blooper here, three for three, so just a double shy of the cycle. Next batter, Greenwell, the blast off Penkin. Fletcher scoring ahead of Greenwell, 12th home run of the season for Mike at a 4-2 Red Sox lead in the ninth. A 5-3 advantage. Fletcher going for the cycle in need of the double. Mark Eichhorn gives up the base hit. Fletcher denied of the cycle, but not denied of helping the Red Sox out to out of the bottom of the ninth. Roberto Alomar off Ken Ryan doubles in a couple of runs, so the Blue Jays have rallied to tie the Red Sox at five all and force extra innings. Mike Timlin on now for the Blue Jays. They're in the tenth, and as you know, the Orioles and the Yankees have already lost, so the field an optimistic look for next year, both in the game as the Tigers and the Brewers went at it at Tiger Stadium. No rainouts at home for Sparky's team this year, kind of an unusual thing in Detroit. Chad Kruder with a two-run homer, and then Alan Trammell, a two-run shot, his 10th of the season, and the Tigers had a 4-3 lead. Four batters later, Eric Davis, a three-run homer, a seven-run fifth inning. Batista, by the way, did go 0-4 for 4 in the leadoff spot, but the Tigers end their final homestand with a bang this season, clubbing Milwaukee 8-4 to, to the playoffs, and Rivera gets Nigel Wilson, and then against Jeff Conine. Nothing happening there. Daryl Whitmore watches strike three. Marlins trailing one nothing in the eighth. Kona, the outstanding rookie, has played in every game for the Marlins. Singles in Chuck Carr to tie the game at one. Lenny Dykstra, Rooters everywhere. Dykstra has scored a lot of runs and played well defensively, but watch him here in the eighth as he tries to steal third in a 1-1 game, and he's thrown out. So the Phils and the Marlins tied at one in extra innings. As you know, the Expos winning their game in Montreal. Dykstra did have a, a run scored tonight, so 68 runs in his last 72 games. And Conine with the RBI single that we showed you mentioned that he has played in every game for the expansion Marlins so far this season. White with a broken bat single that scores Marquise Grissom. Remember White in the lineup because of the injury to Moises Alou out for the year. Top of the second, 2-0 Expos. Pendleton's at second. Facero gets David Justice swinging. And then Damon Berryhill goes down. The Braves leave Pendleton stranded. Bottom of the third, 2-0 Expos when Rondell White takes Avery deep. Up, out, gone. He is home run. Makes it a 3-0 Expo lead. He hates when that happens. Top of the fourth, 4-0 Montreal. Ron Gant is at third. Nobody out again. Facero comes through, this time getting Fred McGriff. Next batter, Pendleton, and he's caught looking. Gant later scored on a Berry Hill single. The Braves' only run of the game. 
as Facero struck out 11, a career high for him, winning his 12th game of the year as Steve Avery denied his 17th victory, and the Braves lose ground as National League East, pending the outcome of the Phillies game, the Expos can put a little bit of heat on there. Thursday, the Expos finish up with the Braves. Greg Maddox starting against Dennis Martinez, who, remember, rejected the trade to Atlanta. The Phils have tomorrow off before the Braves come to town. Speaking of the Braves out west, the Giants and the Astros in the Dome, and San Francisco try to close the gap on the Braves. Gonzalez grounding to second, then Biggio, also a ground out. Ken Caminiti. And when Swift has the sinker working, this is how it looks. Didn't allow a ball out of the infield until the fourth. Two men out of the fifth. With nobody out, Pete Harnish gets Clayton. And then Manwaring. Giants fail to score in the seventh. Manwaring makes up for it with a shot toward left center. Willie McGee is in for a 1-0 Giant lead. And then Swift gets Eric Anthony. A ball that actually hits him. Wow. Giants hang on to win it. Rod Beck, his 42nd save. Bonds goes one for three with a walk. Swift, a career high, 10 strikeouts as the Giants gain ground on the Braves. Let's see how it looks in the National League West. It's a two and a half game difference. The Brave magic number nine. The Giants to finish up with the Astros at 400. I guess that's better than being below 300. Anyway, there was bad defense in this game as Harkey threw it away and then Ray Langford's turn on Glenn Allen Hill's shot. It gets through his legs. Mark Witten also had some trouble with the ball like I did with words a moment ago on the Carl Rhodes liner. And then Sammy Sosa grounds one to the left side. Ozzie and Stan Royer caused problems and it got ugly. In the sixth, tied at seven, two on for Glenn Allen Hill and get out of here. He watched it and took his bat with him. Rene Arocha served it up as the Cubs win 11-9. Glenn Allen Hill since his trade from the Indians in late August, batting 367, eight homers and 19 runs batted in. The Cardinals' five errors were the most by a St. Louis team since 1989. And Randy Myers added to his National League save record with his 49th, just for kicks, too. Jeremy Burnitz, a two-run homer. As the fans hang on to that one for a 4-2 lead. And then in the ninth, still 4-2, Dave Clark pinch hitting off Joel Johnson. A two-run shot that ties the game at four. In the tenth, still tied at four, Charlie O'Brien. And that's gone. John Franco actually gave up the home run to Dave Clark as the Mets go ahead and hang on to win in 10 by the score of 6-5. to five. Sid Fernandez, who started the game, left in the fifth inning due to stiffness in his shoulder. The Angels, Blackjack wouldn't mind busting this time around, going for win number 22, the strikeout of Jim Edmonds, then Chili Davis. Mark Langston pitched well until the fifth. Angels up 1-0 until Ron Karkovic crushed the Langston pitch. Home run number 20 scores Robin Ventura in front of him. So it's 2-1 in favor of the Sox. That must be the alfalfa sprouts they serve at the Big A to get the crowd going. In the sixth, Karkovic again. This time he doubles to the gap in left center. Ventura and Lance Johnson score for Karkovic on the day. Two for four, four ribbies. The Sox go on for the 7-1 win. They open up a six-game lead over the Idle Rangers. Texas comes a call into Comiskey for three starts. The six, two out and scoreless. And George Brett shows he can still do it. He goes deep. Little power is 17th on the year. That gave the Royals a 1-0 lead. Next year starting to look pretty good for George. Bottom seven tied at one. Jerry Brown. Drops a single on the left. That would be the game winner. Scott Heeman comes around to score two on A's. So Witt outpitches Apier. He strikes out 11. Apier didn't allow a run until the sixth. So his scoreless streak, his consecutive scoreless inning streak, now history at a club record 33 and two thirds. Seven. He kicks six eight. Not high enough, though, for Roberto Alomar. See you later. Home run number 17 for Alomar gets out of the park to ride one nothing Jays after one. How about more from Roberto in the third? Rips this shot to right over the head of Rob Deere. Henderson and White score. Goes for a stand-up triple. 4-0 Toronto. Even the outs were hard in the sixth. John Olerud, line drive. Breaks John Ballantin's glove. Give me a new one. 4-1 Jays through six and a half. Dave Stewart very solid. Gets some help from his outfielders and right. Joe Carter coming on. The sliding catch. You know this hurts on that turf. In center field, Devon White, he's been doing it for years, uses the wheels, 
to Rob Scott Fletcher of a hit to the seventh. Jays up 4-1. Minchie still in. Pat Porter says see you later too. He breaks a 48-game homerless drought. 5-1 Jays as Minchie gets pinchy. That uh, doesn't rhyme, but I tried to force it anyway. Dave Stewart now 19 and 7. Lifetime against the Red Sox. Best in the NL. He's trailing one nothing and Sean Berry. Base hit, Ron Ganton left, and here comes Larry Walker, and he's coming in hard, and Barry Hill's at the plate, and the throw is there, and Walker is gone. Top of the fifth, one nothing Spose still. Infield is in, runners on second and third, and Nixon to Delano to Shields. Can he come home? No, he can't. Barry Hill scores, and it's tied at one. Next batter, Jeff Blauser to the Shields. This time the throw is there, and Arrestus Morera is off the bag. Lemke scores 2-1. Three batters later, Dave Justice. He is on fire. And he goes deep. And this one will hit off the wall over the head of Walker. It clears the bases. He had two doubles. Justice has 113 RBIs. He's tied with Gant for the team and the league lead. Maddox getting some great support. Terry Pendleton smothers it. The throw is in time, and the Braves win it by a score of 6-3. And you know what? Just how the Braves drew it up last month when Thigan trade. Martinez pitched, and Atlanta won. Maddox wins his seventh straight game. Braves 98 wins, tying their modern. And joined Tom Glavin as the NL's only 20-game winner. Steve Finley, the gratter. Will Clark, the nice flip, and the out. Meanwhile, Drabeck helps himself, spearing McGee's comebacker. Will Clark, talking a little hitting with former President George Bush. Maybe a little health care talk in there as well. Staying healthy, something Clark hasn't been able to do. But this night, he was in a groove. Two for four. Great sign for Giant fans. Then Barry Bonds, deep to left center, and Clark will score in the play. Bonds back in a groove. Three doubles, three-nothing Giants. Next batter, Kurt Manwaring. One of his two hits, and Bonds comes in. Here comes the throw from Finley, and Bonds does a great job to avoid the tag, and he is safe. Four-nothing Giants. It is seven-zip in the ninth, and Kevin Rogers just mopping up. Caminetti bounces to third. Game, set, and match, seven zip. Just like the good old days. You got Bonds hitting, Burkett pitching, and winning his 20th. The last giant pitcher to win 20 was Mike Kruko. The purpose of my announcement today is that uh, I wanted to announce that this is going to be my final season. special uh, feeling there among us because a lot of us came up through the organization together. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. So Nolan Ryan strikes out the first major league batter he ever faced. Well, Nolan Ryan is up against the Giants. Strike three call on Mills, and there's the record breaker. 3,509 strikeouts for Nolan Ryan. I think everybody uh, has visions of uh, things turning out than different than they really do. Uh, and obviously, I would have loved to have finished uh, striking out the last hitter I ever faced.
I think the thing that has made it the most special is the people. I used to think that I always wanted to play in one place from the time I started to the time I ended and be on one organization, one team. But as my career grew and went on, and I went from New York to California, to Houston, and now up here to Arlington, that I realized that I really was fortunate to get the opportunity to not only play on both coasts, but to get to spend 14 years of my career in Texas. And I really feel that it has been a special event. Now, the guy who discovered Nolan Ryan, his name is Red Murph. He saw Ryan firing fastballs back at Alvin High School in 64, said from his home on Thursday, quote, I just think that Nolan Ryan saved the game of baseball. He called him a class, class act. So in an effort to mix in a win once in a while, since he threw out Tim 8 and 15 Pew, who only wins once in a while, his last victory exactly a month ago. So he's due to do something. Dodgers and Reds from Riverfront. Bottom two, 2-1 two in favor of L.A. Cincinnati pitcher Tim Pugh helps his own cause. Single to right off of Tom Candiotti. Tim Costo scores, so we were tied at two. Bottom of the fifth, now 5-2 Reds. And Chris Sabo adds to the lead. It's a two-run shot, but he didn't get all of it. See, he would get the home bounce. And the Reds would take a 7-2 lead. They go on for the 11-2 win. Sabo, three for five with three. D by the Jays in this one. Fantastic, actually. Roberto Alomar taking the wild throw, but still able to apply the tag to Wade Boggs. He is one fantastic second baseman. Bottom of the seventh, Toronto up by a run. When Devon White changed that and put his team up by three runs by driving home Alfredo Griffin and Ricky Henderson, who is pumped up about being in another pennant race. Jays hold on to add to the misery of the Yanks. New York hasn't had a losing month the entire season until now. They're 8 and 14 in September. Quiet in the month of September until that swing. Yeah. Over the wall and left. Fail. One nothing San Francisco. That was in the second. This was in the fourth. Barry striking again. That one over the wall and center field. 42 and 43 for Big Barry. In the ninth. Ride back on in relief, trying to slam the door shut on San Diego, and he does. Picking up save number 43 for him to help Solomon Torres pick up the win. Sixth time this year that Barry has hit two out in a game of the year. Plenty of fight left in both of these teams. 6-5 Atlanta in the bottom of the seventh when Wes Chamberlain hammered one in the center. Darren Dalton scored to tie the game at six apiece. Later, with Deion Sanders on first, Otis Nixon slapped one into right field. And Petey with the grievous display. And I mean major grievous in such a huge game. Dion scored to go up 7-6. And then Ronnie Gant broke through that SI cover boy curse with number 36 of the year for him to add insurance for the Braves as they beat the Phillies and win round two. Atlanta's 99th win is a new record for on the Phillies with their win at Shea in front of a few more crazies. Top of the third, Tim Spear in a scoreless contest, but he changed that. Solo shot. One nothing Montreal. And the Expos were getting the defense as well. Rondell White, flat out. He's been playing some fantastic baseball for Montreal, filling in for the injured Moise Alou and helping the Expos beat the Mets on Saturday. And how about those Mets? 102 losses. First time that's happened since 65. Expos win, but they really need...